Uh, essentially, in, in the design of your medical complex, you have uh, five things and uh, five facilities, I think. And these facilities are being built with federal money and, and such. Uh, can't be predicted in growth pattern, in my mind, because uh, one of them may be funded by OEO, and the next year OEO might not exist, or something like this. And they could be, so uh, they could be built in any order or uh, in any pattern, and some of them might not get built at all. So uh, with that idea in mind, we had to come up with a solution to uh, trying to get the, uh, take advantage of the things that would bring these five facilities to the site, the interaction between the five, and the only actual reason for them being located here in conjunction with the clinic. So uh, this is where I talked about in my little pamphlet here on, on the, uh, the big idea in quotes that uh, architects and architectural students often come up with. And this big idea is, uh, is in the form of a question. And the question is this, what or how can we take advantage of some of the physical form implications of this, uh, this idea of uh, facility independence? would be something like uh, no facility could or should be built up atop or below something else because this other facility might get might not get built or it might get built first or last and no facility if it were missing should leave a gap in the total design in other words you can't have you couldn't uh, have walking through something that wasn't there until it was there or something so you can't leave a gap in uh, in the architectural design and no facility should be so inflexible that it couldn't be expanded when another facility would come onto the site. This was pretty important because uh, if you had a rehabilitation facility and added something onto one of your other things, you would probably have to add onto the rehabilitation facility. That's an example of that. And perhaps the most important is how do you avoid the, um, the loss of, or, uh, of identity in a conglomerate of medical facilities? I think. Uh, West Virginia's medical center, although it was built at one time, was kind of an interesting thing in the in maze of corridors. The maze of where it lies every, uh, every 100 feet on the wall when you're in there. And this is pretty important when you have uh, patients, is uh, they have to know where they are and, and know not to get lost. And it's outpatients, the in, out and inpatients, have to know where to park and uh, where, to, where the restaurant is, and need, it's even important to the doctors because they have to work in this thing all day long. Uh, so uh, what I've tried to do with this idea was uh, <coughs> combine things on levels. We've tried to uh, have uh, the level separation of, of uh, the functions of the facilities while at the same time uh, maintaining a vertical separation of each facility. Uh, I hope that doesn't sound too complicated. Uh, you'll see it in the drawings. But like we're on our first level, I have what I call the outpatient level and then a professional medical level above that. And above that I have what I call special services level and above that is an inpatient level. Now these are just to take advantage of the functional interdependence of each one of the facilities. So next in our pamphlet and next in my presentation we're going to list the uh, five facilities, and then I'll talk about uh, how each one of them goes to relate to each of the other ones on the site. Uh, the first one is the clinic. We'll just quickly go through these. Um, there's two parts of the clinic, your ancillary functions on your first floor and your professional services on your second floor, more or less. You know, we can switch these around, you know, some spill over into other parts. And the neighborhood health center is practically the same deal, only we have a little bit more uh, social mindedness to it of medical social workers and health education and such in that facility. On the mental health center, community mental health center on the next page, is uh, we have an outpatient clinic, and then I've combined in this a uh, 20 patient, 20 bed inpatient area for more or less patients there for evaluation or emergency care or something like this. And then I have a 40, about 44 patient <coughs> day care or night care mental health center for patients 
uh, there just for either the daytime or the nighttime, depending on their particular problems. Uh, our next facility is the Rehab Center, which has physical therapy, occupational therapy, and I have ear, eye, nose, and throat listed here, but actually it's turning out to be a uh, speech, speech, speech and hearing speech. clinic, yes, and a sheltered workshop area that would be used by uh, outpatients and people within the total complex. The next one is an extended care facility, and here we have about a 90 bed, uh, 90 patient extended care facility in the sense of the word, inpatient, and a 50 bed domiciliary facility for patients needing the most minimal care, and a 20 or 25 bed transient accommodation, which I call, which some of you might call a, a motel, where patients would stay overnight uh, when they would require, say, two days of testing or some kind of a lengthy evaluation or a minor treatment, something like that. And I have a separate section called, we'll call a service. Now, if you want to turn over to Exhibit 1 and 2 after the service, we're going to skip over service for the time being. You can see how we've uh, tried to divide these things up. Uh, the top diagram shows you our different levels, and the bo bottom diagram shows you the vertical separation of the different facilities. And this might help you in following along the board these, uh, this diagram and the ones to follow. And also it will help you in understanding what you're looking at in the model. The bottom diagram, in case somebody has trouble reading sections, is the uh, front of the model over here, in case you don't catch that. <coughs> Actually, when I gave this uh, before, I asked the people, the panel on the jury to read the book ahead of time so we could ask questions about it right then because it's going to turn into a battle of what is this and what is that and I don't understand this and it's a pretty uh, complex thing in the whole but individually it's pretty simple so that's why I presented this book to break things down but I am I don't you folks didn't have a chance to read this yet so we probably have to stumble through it maybe a little bit uh, it might be a good idea as a I'm going to start on the floor plans now, and as we're going through, you can follow on your exhibit like three, four, five, and six to uh, understand what you're looking at <coughs> in in totality. Well, forget it. <laughs> on the uh, first floor, you'll notice that's exhibit uh, three. We had some problems with parking on this site. You're very limited in, in the, uh, your parking. And I think your biggest problem when you go to do any redesigning of your clinic is going to be patient uh, identity in this parking. Like if he goes to a parking lot and finds it's full, you can't send him over to someplace else because he may never know that that other place is over there. Or like you can't send him up behind up on the hill to park up in there unless you've got some kind of direct uh, identity to the patient when he's in his car. And then you have another problem. When he's out of his car, he's got to have some kind of entrance to go to. The patient has to know wh that's the entrance. And th this is important to you also, just for the control of the patient himself. So that would, you know, kind of limit, make it rather expensive, actually, in manners and such to do uh, parking up here or parking here or even a two-level parking garage, you might have the same problem because you have patients going in and out on both floors. So uh, on the first floor, we tried to uh, give, get all our parking for these patients. And um, also, this is like, it's laid out in the same, with the same idea that you have now with the ancillary functions and the functions that might be used outside of the community or outside of the complex itself located on this floor and um, you'll notice that in the center section I've combined the neighborhood health center which we talked about with the existing clinic and we've kind of overlapped some services but uh, many of them could be combined such as the uh, pharmacy and the uh, part of the business office the records area x-rays and a large lab and things like this your mechanical <coughs> equipment and, and the such 
over in this area you'll have your emergency area because uh, this is directly off of here and it's also it's directly off the main entrance right here but it's also uh, on this service core this elevator core which is in the hatch on the exhibit three is um, this is where all the doctors no matter where they were in the complex the medical doctors would be coming down from either that or they could come down from their offices in the clinic or something like this so this is uh, uh, directly accessible to them and also it's your receiving area for nighttime receiving or something like this this would be the only entrance kept open 24 hours a day the rest of the this area could be closed at that time. And Question, where are the existing ones? Just get people oriented. Where's, Where's the existing the clinic? clinic? Existing clinic goes over to the stairwell right here. That's your stairwell. No. That's the stair. That's our mm -hmm. presence there. Mm -hmm. and and this is the, the bottom is, uh, is the local stairwell. Right. Okay. And uh, I think your existing lot goes about down to here. So you can see. Yeah. spilled over a little bit. Over on here also uh, I've added the, uh, this is a contradiction to my first statement in that I've tried to keep this outpatient level, keep the professional off this level. Uh, if anybody's an x-ray technician, I'm sorry, but uh, anyway I've tried to uh, keep them out of, off of this level to allow the patients to come and go without uh, disrupting any of the medical functions of the complex. But uh, over in here we've added the, uh, the community mental health center outpatient area. And this was done mainly because uh, the interaction I thought between the medical and the psychiatric doctors wouldn't be that great. And another one was that it was pretty important to have the uh, mental patients know exactly where to go and also it was, it was uh, more convenient to des design when you'll see the parking area above. I really haven't asked questions about a particular floor. What do you think that? How many parking places did you put? Oh, we've, uh, there are 70 spaces about over in here. And you also have the option of going down one floor because actually this <coughs> area down in here is about 10 feet above grade and you only need a 12 foot for a parking garage. So you could go down one floor and build over in here. You are going to have a big problem with parking. And over on this side, we have about 45 spaces, which would suffice. Uh, the two entrances, the main reason they're there is because of your existing clinic in that we can't run a road around back or something like this, and that would hurt patient identity. So I've kind of combined these entrances here with a uh, community, what I call a community health center over in this area with the neighborhood health center and the community mental health center and then your existing clinic with all the facilities that the clinic itself might own or operate. You wonder with a, uh, an establishment as large as this and with as many people coming and going and with space being at such a premium whether it wouldn't be uh, financially more feasible to eliminate the parking lot completely and have a, a large parking lot uh, a mile away or so in some place where uh, land is not at a premium and then have two full-time buses shuttling people back and forth you know I don't know how big a big Volkswagen bus or just a bus that holds say 20 I people I wonder how much sure. more or less it would cost because when you have as many people there that's totally inadequate that parking uh, for what we what you're having here you can start off right off the, at the beginning uh, with no parking that's totally inadequate well, if you add up the floor, you would double it. Now it would give you 100. Yeah, yeah. you need to double it. Well, it would be doubled. I mean, yeah, for one level. level. Jerry, is that on the uh, grade level, Locus Avenue there, that you have that on the left side? This? Is that the grade level? No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's the grade level of your door. Yeah. Of this door right here. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's, it's one grade. Now, he's aware of uh, the creek running through, but he's no more worried about it than... Uh, the other architects where yeah. we can build around the creek. I think on the, the water. double level, yeah, but, but if not, I mean, <coughs> we have talked about this before, hadn't we, about uh, a parking lot someplace I think else. we need more than 70 places right now. Yeah. Even now, <laughs> that's the reason why yeah. we need the that's two Well, this is only patient we have, or staff and professional parking elsewhere. But I don't that's think your bus idea is, it sounds nice, you know, but uh, 
as like they do it at school well, at West well, Virginia, they, and the kids yeah. don't ride the buses; they'll well, drive their cars. They just, you yeah. take, let's say, for example, in Chicago, they have you know parking lot around Soldiers Field and shuttle buses coming in, and uh, thousands and thousands of people park there, and uh, many people find it so very much more convenient. They charge I think a quarter or something like that, and it just takes five minutes to get in, and it saves them more time. And I mean, we have talked about this in one yeah, and when you you do that, people are forced to do that because they have no other place to go. Mm -hmm. But if you started that shuttle bus, they would go to other doctors. Well, I think we'd have to consider the two levels you've suggested. Mm -hmm. Probably the only <laughs> on our next floor, exhibit four, is the professional level. Now, on this level, we have all our doctors, except for the mental health doctors that I mentioned before, and we have all the areas where doctor-patient uh, work would come into play. You'll notice the existing clinic I've left more or less alone and uh, kind of extended it on over into the neighborhood health center over in here with their separate entrances and waiting areas at the same time. But over in the neighborhood health center, we've added social workers, medical social workers on this floor, who would be work in conjunction with doctors for the medical care. And also we've made, made one central baby clinic, I call it, for a combination neighborhood health center and existing clinics. Because I've tried to do this because I think the patient spillover between the two would probably be great. And also the doctor consultation and the doctor uh, what do you want to say? Doctor consultation on the floor between doctors and the trade over of specialists or something like this would be great also. Over on this area, we have the uh, rehabilitation center combined in one central thing with just one waiting area and each one of the different types of rehabilitation physical therapy, occupational therapy. Is that about parking? Yes, it is. It's about the park. Mm -hmm. park. Well, directly yeah, below it. Underneath. Mm -hmm. And also over in this area. An elevator up, up right. to them. To them. And for rehab, you actually have to have one. Mm -hmm. If you're going to put it on the second floor. Mm -hmm. That big one. Yeah, well, we have a very large, uh, this is a service elevator, and then we have the two regular passenger. Uh, also over in here, we have the shelter workshop with a um, exterior loading area over in here and this could be an entrance area too it's on grade level on the other side of the complex itself here are some doctors parking we've even allowed the doctors to park on their own level so they could pull right in here and come in here they could go unnoticed maybe come and go as they like to get there in a uh, hurry if they had to Administration's been left in this almost the total back wing in here. Um, actually, you'll see in the rehabilitation, I've tried to keep things simple, but at the same time I've tried to combine things that I, I might combine while maintaining their uh, separate identity. And I think we can get some good patient interaction here, like the patient may end up at his doctor's here and then go over to here or something like that. I don't know what advantage, you can look at it these later, I'm, you get to keep the voids, but I don't know what advantage it'd be to go into the specifics, they're pretty well labeled in here. How about in uh, physical therapy, I've given you a large tank room and a gymnasium, and plus your treatment cubicles and your consultation offices. We've given you a craft area that could spill over into the sheltered workshop and now occupational therapy, uh, demonstration kitchen, uh, about 10 counselors' offices, a classroom, and in the speech and hearing clinic, you have some doctor's offices and examination. Have and you got uh, any provision for residents of people who are at a rehab center? This is strictly a, an ambulatory rehab. This is a come and go. Well, remember, he's going to present in the ECF what we would consider non-ECF kind yeah, of people, transient facilities, yeah. Most, you know, to support a rehab center like this, you have to provide residents. You, know, you can't support it from your own you know, radius of people who could come and go by day. You have to provide the you know, residents. 
Okay, that's on our special, what I called special services, which is actually uh, just a conglomerate of unusual things about the uh, complex itself. Now, on our rehab residents, could be here in a 46 bed domiciliary facility. The patients would stay needing only the very minimal care. And they're right over the rehabilitation center. If they can, they could go down the stairs and come right out <coughs> into the shelter workshop where they might be working, or they could go over and take the elevator down or something like that. Also, over in here, we have the motel section or transient accommodations in uh, mostly double and triple rooms. And each one of these uh, units is provided with one of our balconies onto the street. And they're also provided with an outdoor court. <coughs> Do some interaction or some even some rehabilitation. <coughs> On this floor also is the home health center, and this was put on this floor for the uh, proximity to the doctors below them and also to the uh, patients above them. And it gives them an outside access, which would probably be pretty important to the nurses coming and going, and also to the supply of the service itself. Uh, in this area, this long thing right here, is our service, and we have the kitchen down on this floor. And this was put here mainly, well, the whole service thing was put here mainly because it can be serviced by the back road that I've left open up in here. And trucks may pull up in here and unload here or here, and they're completely hidden from view from anything else. They pull right underneath. But that's them. a level above. <coughs> right. No, we're at road level. Street right now. level up here. Right, street level. I thought you put your system. That's oh, on the deck up here. Right. He's you're putting right. this on the deck. This up. goes up on, on our roof now. Mm -hmm. This is level. And we have a kitchen, a central stores area, and the laundry also. And over in this section, we have the uh, this is the mental health building now. We have the uh, uh, inpatient area for the mental health patients, the 20 bed thing, with a an open section and a lock section and nursing services control both lock, open, and entrance. They don't have a balcony. I got in trouble on the jury for that for the simple reason that I thought they might be more prone to jump off than uh, somebody in the transit accommodations. So. Over in here, also mm -hmm. the same thing, and there is 60 parking spaces here for staff, and it also is at grade level here, but here it's one grade down, and it would be very easy to build another level in there. I think it's pretty important in a medical facility such as this with um, people who are com not necessarily confined to bed but confined to the facility for an extended period to have the cars more or less hidden from view but at the same time give them some action because it's, people don't like to look out over parking lots but at the same time they like to see people come and go. So you'll notice on the top floor I've tried to give them both that. Do you have a staff dining room? No, I have a oh, better than that. <laughs> yeah, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I pointed this presentation. <laughs> uh, this is what we'll call the uh, inpatient area, and this is really what it is. This contains almost all our patients there for medical care, the way you might think of it, because we have the four nursing units for the extended care facility right in here and our 42 patient day and night hospital area over in here. Now, in the extended care facility, I've given all the patients a double room and all the patients have their own bath. This is, seems to be the coming trend in extended care facilities. And I think that uh, there are some, you know, larger rooms, four man rooms, and but there are few there. I think they're only around well, actually I only see three, and there are a couple single rooms. But most of the uh, thought today is that double rooms are the best and private baths are the best. You notice the gray areas are what we'll call supporting services, which are uh, utility rooms, um, nursing stations, and the like. In this area, we've given, we've given them uh, what I call in the pamphlet a community commons area, and this is some place to go, some place to you know, call their own. It's separated from things, but it has such services in it as a little shop where they could sell the patient work that they might do in occupational therapy or just little needs that the patients might have. It has a beauty shop, a barber shop, 
a chapel and, and a cha uh, chaplain's office and a library and a TV lounge and a snack bar in here and a large dining area right in the center of it. And splitting off on, in each one of the units, we have this central community area and then in each one of the units we have a uh, secondary area we could call, I call a living room or something like that where you could set up the group furniture and just for the people in the units. The people <coughs> out in here have the balconies where they can go out and uh, I don't, you can't call them sun balconies anymore because uh, actually that they aren't used too much for that but extended care patients like to watch people come and go, they like to watch the cars go up and down the street and then they're practically all on top of the street right now. So this is a good action area. Back in here, we've given the people an outdoor court in here. Uh, I've just kind of indicated what might go on in here. And a uh, little central commons area, plus there are two living room areas over in here. But uh, these people are given this kind of uh, commons area. And these might be, you know, uh, uh, well, I couldn't say that because in the whole facility, I haven't separated patients because they have separate baths that so they could be, wouldn't have to be separated according to sexes. They wouldn't even have to be separated really according to uh, physical condition as they might be today because uh, each one of the facilities has its own amenities so we wouldn't need such a separation. Over in this area, we're given, I've given a um, activities court area with the lesser, uh, the more restful activities over in this area because they will be it will be utilized by the extended care patients and then we've given, uh, clear up the basketball for the mental health patients who would be in the day and night center. Where's Hillside at? Which is yeah. Hillside? The back street. This one? The back street. Right here. That's it's it. one level so down. you've got a couple of bridges over there. Right? Uh-huh. One level down. These are bridges right here. How far is that from the over hill road up there next week back, Mr. You didn't, you didn't use the whole 150 feet that we showed you, could you? You told me that you mm. didn't go quite back to our lot line back No, there. no, the existing the houses on the end of it, but what's the height of the elevation uh, of this compared to that street back there? I mean, he is now on the can... floor above Hillside Drive, well, as we call it, except that he has lowered what have you done? You told me in footage. It, in the I jury. shaved off Hillside Drive six feet. He took, yeah, you got because to take account of that. More, they didn't lower it when they built the street. So well, uh, yeah, oh, well, all this is, uh, is a street been hypothetical. moved anyway, you know. <laughs> it, well, what are all those things up in there, that, each of those individual things? These things? Yeah. Oh, well, uh, I've given one I call a, a croquet lawn, a barbecue pit, a little pond, a sandbox, shuffleboard, bocce ball, horseshoes, uh, basketball, and uh, badminton or a uh, small tennis court. So you go from the more restful garden area, garden type to the more strenuous. In between here is our restaurant with the um, outdoor court area in here and uh, this would be used by the medical staff and it also would be used by the day or night patient from the uh, uh, mental health center who would cross the court right through here. This did is you, there. Mr. Deering, did you build a large, uh, one large uh, lounge uh, area in the mental health center for, you know, group of... Uh, We've given them one What's the largest unit in there? Right here. It's tremendous. That's it. That is part of their right. territory. Mm -hmm. They're all, they're all the way see. through here. And that's a link. Mr. Deering, a couple of us would like to know what you've done with all the children that we're going to have to have with the staff that works here. Do you have a nursery, a staff nursery anywhere in here? <laughs> Yes, that goes in the administration section. Because <laughs> 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 in order to staff this, that'd be something that would really be needed. Sector, well, we can't think of everything. <laughs> We're making the we'll put them in Mr. Ross's office. And <laughs> play with the phones or something. Uh, over in the uh, neighbor or community mental health center in the day and night section, 
They've also been given these little living room areas, but they've been given smaller group therapy areas, and the, uh, two of those, and even smaller doctor patient areas. Where they, they, each one of these people also has been given a more or less double room, and they share a bathroom here. Because actually, it's pretty important to these people to have some place to call their own and to have some place to go and buck out for the day. Even the daytime patients will come and sleep most of the day. I guess new medical treatment might cause that. Uh, up in the restaurant, there is a uh, section that could be closed for a, say, doctor's meeting if you wouldn't need the whole thing for one of these arrangements. What are you going to put uh, heating and air conditioning? It goes down on the first two floors. I've kind of skipped over that. It's mm -hmm. a, really a continuation of what you have. You would just build it all out like that and make it two floors. Anyway. <coughs> all right. In here, how many different <coughs> doctors uh, are are in this group? Let's say, for example, I mean, including you know the offices for some of these you know uh, other types of things, the, the mental health and. Uh, some of the extended care type of facilities. I mean, is this going to include, what, 50 doctors? I mean, because it seems to me there, there have to be extra offices for more doctors because the building that we have now, as it is, uh, already is short of offices. You know, if we want more doctors, somewhere we're going to have to have offices for more physicians, of, especially internal medicine, general practice, and so forth, uh, so that this type of big load can be handled. Mm -hmm. Well, you have. You, what you're saying, Don, is he can provide for expansion of, of the of the basic plan. building of the mm -hmm. basic clinic to support all this. I mean, if we're going to have all these extra things coming in, then the loads will be increasing, increasing, mm -hmm. so that the basic group has to be larger, and more and more offices have to be arranged. Larger X-ray, larger laboratory. Now, uh, by the way, what about laboratory too? Because the laboratory space would have <laughs> to be, you know, tripled and X-ray the same way too. Mm -hmm. It's down, well, it, the laboratory now maybe is, is down on the first floor. We've added more doctor space. I think we've added 14 more doctors uh -huh. in the neighborhood health center. Are you going to provide the doctors too? Yeah, that was the problem was uh, how much do you extend the existing clinic when you, uh, well, when you have empty offices uh -huh. uh, or something like that. So you'll notice the more doctors I, there, there, yeah. yeah. Oh. Good. Uh, um, also in the laboratory question, <coughs> we've combined some of the laboratories and added them down here and the x-ray is much bigger and the records area has really been enlarged on this thing. Plus we've given the neighborhood health center some kind of small uh, lab to maintain their uh, separate identity for administrative functions, but actually these things could be all Combined he hasn't been drawn, I take it, over there, but processed in the main lab. Yeah. One of these large rooms for all these inpatients, you're going to have a movie arch. I mean, you know, yeah, and we've given them uh, an auditorium, too. Yeah. It's yeah. on the special yeah. services. Well. And a foyer for them to collect in before that. Yeah. What would the be capacity of a room like that be? What that auditorium. Say? I said about 125. We had 90 patients. So what would this all cost, let's say? <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't even. Well, that doesn't come mm -hmm. in, in the thesis. <laughs> we could do a separate thesis on just the cost. One ABM. That's right. <laughs> one lousy ABM. <laughs> on the elevation, we, I've tried to uh, maintain your identity of what you have at the clinic. And uh, you talked about your love of the roof and the like, and I've read some of the literature where it says, you know, it's made to look nice from up on the hillside, which I don't really know what, what good that does. But anyway, I think <laughs> when you're down on the road, you don't see your roof exactly. You see the cantilever, the part that sticks out. You don't see that. You know, you could have that be flat up there. And not many people would actually see it. So this is what I've tried to do. When you're down on this level, it shows real well on the model, you'll notice that uh, everything cantilevers out and you wouldn't really see what was above it because, you know, that would go straight up and it would look small no matter what it was. So everything is cantilevered out 10 feet just the way your roof is. And uh, the structural system remains the same right on those floors. So we've given some kind of an identity with the 
straight along, you know, solid thing, and then the open entrance, and then solid, then the open entrance, and then solid again, and the like, while at the same time maintaining the stone wall that you have around in here, which could be cleaned up a little bit, and it looks rather nice. I've, uh, the lowness of the whole thing comes from the, uh, um, Neighborhood. Yeah, the neighborhood, and partly also for functional reasons, because uh, you can't build a high rise when you don't know what you're going to put in it. And you, it's very expensive to plan to put something on top of something else. And if you don't plan, it's ten times more expensive mm -hmm. because it, you know when you have to enlarge plumbing and mechanical areas just for something that may not come it is expensive. And then also when you have to tear off an existing building to add something onto it. So that's the lowness comes because of the independence of the different facilities here and, here. and, and the uh, these areas I hope give some kind of identity to the patient. Like if he's coming into something that would be concerned with the clinic, let's say he would know exactly that's the entrance, you know, in mental health center, community mental health center, or the neighborhood health center. I don't know exactly that's where he's supposed to go. No. You have been to Johns Hopkins Hospital, both of No, I haven't. Every open space in the Johns Hopkins complex has now been filled up. Yeah. Originally, you know, they were separate, but of course it's a it's a history of just a terrible accretion of building and space and windows and doors. And now it's an absolute total prison. Uh, in that in order to steal and get space for a new surgical lab or a new operating suite, they've simply locked buildings together. And there's some way you can build a building, which you can't do that. So you're preserving the aesthetic lines and the pressure of expansion, you know, this would be very useful. I mean, it never was. It, it's not a pretty hospital. It never was. It's, mm -hmm. like, it's just a massive ugliness. So it probably didn't destroy anything. Well, it, but I think it's what it, what's what tends to happen in medical centers. You fill in the blanks. Well, it's yeah, not just the aesthetic quality that is really hurting. It probably is a lousy hospital working wise. I mean, you can't fill in a space and say it'll work just as well as uh, something that's been planned. So, what happened? Well, go uh, ahead and start building. <laughs> 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 I think you've done a magnificent job. Are you? Yeah. Oh, you haven't built enough parking. I don't think. I think it's yeah. almost. And you probably will be more aware of that. Maybe. Yeah. How many parking uh, spaces are there right now? For patients? Uh, Fifty-three out 53 here. Fifty-three here, fourteen there, and thirty-six. Staff places on the roof, plus we probably have another twenty scattered. The biggest around. gap is in, is in staff parking. What's the total? Uh, That's the because to staff if you have if you that kind of put two tiers in. Let's see, we went to patients. It's seventy-five, and then we're to seven. It's a little less than doubling it though when you the driveways are just. Well, yeah, be about close to three hundred. About 325. Yeah. If you double both yeah. the both staff, double both of See, Mike, on parking, you can't plan the parking strategy for the buildings he's building the way you do for ours. Because people who stay in a facility don't tend to leave the car here. People will bring them, such as your your people in there. Uh, the people who visit them. Oh, but you can uh, also plan for visiting hours during non patient yeah. hours in the lab. Uh, but yeah, this, the biggest increase well. in parking demand you'll have is in, in the category of staff park. Because the increase in, well, what is it in a in a community mental health center or a nursing home? It probably approaches a hospital type service to patient ratio of two to one. Whereas if you you've got to you've got to have two employees for every individual in a setting like that, not in the clinic, we will run three hundred people through here. Uh, with, uh, uh, you know, the same number of employees, but in a way, well, you've got people that's being fed and laundry's operating, and that kind of nursing company and social work, you probably got, you know, you got 70 spaces in one, and you know, you're probably adding 
a staff of two or three hundred people. Mm -hmm. It's usually that too. It's through one of the hospitals that it's probably going up. Mm -hmm. You know, that. when you talk about though the shuttle bus and the like, I don't think um, if you want to do that, then do it with your staff. Yeah, because do it. I would you know, say you can make them do, do anything. Well, well, you would have working. space off that other They're studio. Employees, you mean? They're employees, you mean? They're not the patient. It's just you. Yeah. How often? Well, that's, 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 do like the co-operators would do, they pick the staff up at the house and then they wouldn't care when they got them back there. So they pay them for the port line. <laughs> they start paying for the time they check in the parking. <laughs> wouldn't you want to be picked up at the house? I don't think you'd want to come to my house and pick We have a long drive. Well, that parking is a real problem. The thing that impressed me when I first saw the model and heard the presentation, which was for the architectural jury where Mr. Deering was surrounded with his faculty and private practice uh, colleagues and peers, was the, um, the whole conceptual uh, thrust of it, you know, how, how well he had put together a, a multifaceted approach and then attractively and in connection with our building. I think in, some of us weren't sure he was um, digesting all, you know, after all medical care was new to him, but I think the end product was uh, terribly impressive as to how much he had learned and was capable of teaching us about, you know, functions and the aesthetics of medical care and the interrelationships. And, the, the details, I think, uh, could be and will be debated. You know, if you started forward on any one of these, you'd find, uh, whether it's Dr. Koppel's point or anyone else's, that you need to double the lab. You know, you'd find your own uh, amendments uh, that would have to flow out of uh, needs as we more closely examine them. But the, uh, the overall effect of this thing, I think, is inspiring in some ways. And those of you that haven't spent much time around the model will I think uh, for laymen like ourselves, you get more of a feel of the whole thing as you look at the techniques, you know, of seeing it on a model and, and the, uh, the photographs of the model, which these guys are so artistic, they almost make you feel as if it's been built and you're looking at it, you know, in action. Well, that makes a beautiful complex. How far out, I mean, you know, does this go, I mean, over to where, I mean, on the Way past anything we've thought about buying. It's over past the Esso station and on to McAteer's. Oh, I think on a portion of McAteer's. The end of McAteer's. And how you went almost to the end of McAteer's. And how about this way? It goes past the block. I mean, he, he oh, soon we bought street, clean up the to the street. And, and the street, street's been moved up about 20 feet or so. Yeah, so it assumes a, a lot. Of, there's a lot. Which could these some of these problems can be solved in other ways. If you can't move the street, you go up higher or something. You know, there's other ways uh, that that uh, you just have to fight. Yeah, you, you begin by. Just one question about the cost of building. Of course, it's the same rule, but the cost it, isn't it cheaper to go up than to be going out, depending on you know your contour of land. I mean, especially when you've got to be cutting out a hillside and doing all kind of things. It would seem to me that you know to spread it out all this way would be more expensive than the ways you're going up to add several more floors, even though it may not look quite as attractive. We talked about that. It was the expansion, the, the terrible problems you run in an expansibility of going up. Like, I can't build on top of your clinic. I originally planned to do something on there because uh, the structure is too light. It's mm -hmm. made for what's there. Yeah. And then also closing it down and doing everything else. So you might as well you know, just tear it down and start over again rather than do something like that. If you plan something for two floors and then you have just just one one bag, one thing that you can do, say you plan for two floors to add three later, and you get those three on there and find out that you want to do five more, you'll pay maybe ten or twenty times what you might pay, you know, to build mm -hmm. just the, those five floors on grade mm -hmm. or something. And then if you d don't plan for you have to have vertical, right? But if you don't plan for the horizontal expansion, you're going to get the, the medical complex John, of John Hopkins. It's easy to do this, that the builder 
changed the door in the prison emergency room so we made a <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Touche. Probably right. Yeah. Well, we've already looked into that. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Right. That we can't even get an opinion. <laughs> well, it shows you, you, have to plan, door. you have to plan big, though. Uh, way bigger than you expect because the cost of repairs and alterations is way more than the cost uh, originally. Uh, it's like we had one of our rooms, I wanted the door widened and it would have been cheaper just to build it wider so it wasn't for just to just make the door wider cost $350 <laughs> for less material, you know, and a lot of work. Uh, so you got to plan very, very big. Uh, they still have a place at the med center that they're not using, you know, a, a number of rooms and stuff, and they'll probably use more as time goes on. You have to plan, and even things just empty, you, you ought to have empty places for future expansion, empty offices, empty wings that you don't even think about. Nobody finances those. Things. Well, no, but, I know, but uh, again, with the cost of building, just like here, we moved in this building, and right away, the minute you moved in, it's uh, suboptimal. You have to plan what far in advance. Is the uh, hospital facility uh, the idea extended for extended uh, intensive care, that type of thing, or are you, was your no, thinking no, mainly no, for 24 hours? Extended hour? care. Extended care, all extended care is more or less only on intensive patients. No, in, no acute no patients, cardiac. no cardiacs, no intensive care. Yeah. Well, I think it's tremendous. Essentially, you know, I didn't come up with the concept of what should be in this, but Mr. Ross came up with this and he named the things and I explored what they might be and what the trends are in, in the modern design of like an extended care facilities and all. I think the discussions in the medical staff, in the board, have all reflected at one time or another the extended care facility. Our whole uh, uh, sponsorship of the community mental health center development here, the idea of bringing it together. The uh, rehab center, which we discussed in connection with extended care, and then uh, what's been incorporated is some other ideas, like how to keep people overnight, these uh, social security workups. If we could have a domiciliary, a dormitory, low cost, few bucks a day way to keep them overnight, we could possibly do much more. Well, some of it reflect you know, meetings we've thing, actually but it isn't. People, and I, the reason it isn't is because right now there's a lot of medical care being dispensed by elderly practitioners in small communities who will not be replaced by younger practitioners. Uh, you know, Glenville, West, you, can, you name it. And even though uh, those of us in the medical care field believe the first line of practice is the community, it, in our state it isn't going to happen. We're going to have to think in the more in terms of centralized regional facilities. Mm -hmm. This is a well, I, I hope you all agree to this. Friends, the board has some expenditures. They're extremely minimal for this kind of thing, in my opinion. In other words, to Mr. Deering, who's a student, uh, you know, he's alarmed at the reimbursement cost, you know, at some of these things. It's extremely minimal. The time that we put in, it seems to me, in return, we have received almost an inspiration from which you can inspire other people, you know, uh, if you don't mislead them. I don't think we want to say that this is what we're building, but with this kind of tool, tooling up, we've got here, I think you can start getting our own minds uncluttered. We can do some planning, you know, how do things link together? What is our priority? Is it, you know, our doctors, our internists, we have a good share of the internists in Northern West Virginia in private practice. Isn't it extended care facilities? I mean, then can we convince the vocational rehab people to put offices and to put financing <laughs> instead of building their own facility into this thing, then we could make it going with that, you know, wing over there. Uh, there'd be a lot of amendments. Uh, it appears to me that would have to almost be assumed, even though, but with this kind of thing, you've got to, uh, it's helped me get a little unmuddled, you know, I mean, just looking at it. I mean, as long as it's just, you're just thinking, you know, using words, you have no idea of how an expert puts it together, how he can see relating it. And I, for the I first the time, thing it does. Very the thing it, the thing it teaches you, uh, an exercise like this, is that you don't, you know, suppose you should latch on to one of these elements, like soon, in the next year. Federal finance is what you mean. Yeah, you should latch on to one element, that in, in your haste and greed and, and uh, anxiety, you shouldn't embrace it in such a way that it's 
stifles and shuts off the others. Mm -hmm. That's, this is really what yeah. we're saying, because obviously in, in a lot of the things you build, they're meant to be shared. And if they're built in such a way that they, they can't be shared, that's something that's not mm -hmm. yet come into being, mm -hmm. uh, you, you're, uh, you're in, a, in essence hindering your long-term development. Mm -hmm. Well, you're making something prohibitive. You wouldn't just like building uh, laundry or kitchen support for one facility in such a way you can't deliver it to another. Mm -hmm. And I think this is I mean, this is what why well, this is very useful to us. Why why should Without you actually build a mental health center on this site except for the sharing of the clinic? Exactly. Uh, this is a kind of a, a rough site, really, and it could go someplace yeah. else probably easier. But it's because the clinic's here. So if you don't take advantage of that, you won't get them built here. So you might as well plan that. Maybe somebody will build. Are there any other comments or suggestions, reactions? I, I'd like to ask a question. Is this type of thing? I just came out of a meeting with Mr. William Huff. What is he? State administrator for hospitals. Head of the State Hospital Association. And. Uh, one of his comments was that uh, he was in favor of doing away with all clinics, that everything should be centered around the hospitals. Is he referring to this type of thing? Well, I'd, I'd have to see his remarks to understand because it would be rather pointed in the state of West Virginia. We're one of the few uh, outpatient-based operations with a lot of things based around us. If that's what he's saying, doing away with them, that's pretty, you know, bold Was thing he using clinics in, in what way? He just you know, we heard a man clinics speak once that kept open, referring to clinics and yeah. that they should be closed. No, and I mean, most of... Uh, this kind of clinic, he was talking about the little clinics like the health department has, you know, scattered all over the place. Mm -hmm. TB clinics, prenatal clinics, you know. Well, that's... The hospital people generally want everything hospital-based, and yes. your problem in this they community is you uh, you don't have well, the initiative and the enterprise for quality care on a hospital-based, you know. Because he was talking program. about the ideal hospital having the yeah. outpatient. But how can you have a hospital say that opposes the board opposes group practice or its medical yeah. staff oppose? Then where do you go now? Now they're opposing the most advanced form of you know medical. Well, practice, it, dep it depends on, on where you're at. Many doctors, you know, are doing this. They're getting their offices in or right next to the hospital, and then they're, you know, not having to worry about transportation back and forth. I think that would have to be, you know, qualified the statement. Uh, some little clinic with one or two doctors way out in the middle of the boondocks where uh, there would be no connection or anything else. That would be, you know, sort of silly. But a clinic like this would be a different type of thing. But certainly, in many places, more and more doctors are getting their offices in the hospital. And whether the, I don't know about the legality of all this stuff, but that's what they're doing. They're having their offices in the hospital, seeing the patients in and out and everything right there. It saves a lot of time and effort. Well, he didn't leave himself open for questions. So he ran like a scared rabbit. Well, after clinic can mean a lot of different things, curious. yeah. <laughs> A doctor, a, a GP can open up a, an office and call it a clinic, you know, <laughs> and have one nurse and one uh, uh, lab person say, this is, a, you know, the so-and-so clinic. I mean, and then that, of course, you know, out in the middle of nowhere doesn't help anybody. Else. What was your grade in this? At a B. A B? How come? Oh, we give you an A, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> what did they? Why did they give you a B? Why not an A? Because of the balcony. Because of the no. misspelled words or what? No. <laughs> Punctuation. Because of what? Well, we had seven graduates. Well, what, well, that part, this, what were some of the, I'm not being confused, what were some of the architectural, you know, comments by the people, you know, because you did present okay, the architectural. Okay, one of the big, the big comments was um, uh, most of the people who do the thesis problem research out the needs and then uh, I should have determined exactly what the need for extended care facilities might be in the Fairmont community or how many beds I might have to have in the community mental health center. And I, in consultation with Mr. Ross, we just decided on that mostly through his mind. Uh -huh. And they, they'd like to see me do that on my own. Uh -huh. And another one was um, the non-universality of the spaces themselves because they think the expansion was planned in here, but the, the expansion can't even be as predicted as much as I predicted.
you know, I can't even predict that I'll need, that maybe today I need 20 patients in mental health center, but tomorrow I might need 120. And even that, you know, I shouldn't have predicted as far as I did. I've got a, too concrete a design in other words. And that was the two biggest things. Well, the grounds are for this much building around here. You know. There's always ways to get around those things. You know, we are, as students, we always just build anything and say, you know, if you want to build it, you can find the money and you can find the ground to put it on or something. I'm sure it would. What do you mean? It, the ground yeah, is strong yeah. enough, you mean? Yeah. 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 I don't know. What's the system? 140 feet down and 90 feet of rock underneath. Because I know when they, didn't they have to get these, these fantastic things to build, to, to break the ground here? I think the ground's strong enough. Uh, I got an engineering report on this, and it's uh, 140 feet down. Done in my understanding. It's not put up rock. But it'll hold anything. Won't collapse in one of those old mines, huh? No. No, yeah, that's what we did. Yeah, you never know around here. Once in a while, something collapses. The street will collapse, and all of a sudden, go down ten feet. Well, this is the same thing over West High. It's got the same group. When you put those things, what do you? What kind of glue do you use when you put that stuff together? Elmers. Oh, just Elmer. You don't use epoxy. Nothing like that. Just plants. Just cardboard. Terrific. I think you ought to start right away. <laughs> Tear out some of those other buildings, Macateurs and those places. And the board's with us. They could make a decision this afternoon. The only thing you know, talk about extended <laughs> care facilities with nursing homes, you know, a number of new nursing homes, you know, planned for the state and everything. How does this, you know, tie in with that sort of thing? I, I have an opinion on it, but it, it's based on the knowledge of the beds that are said to be needed. Yeah. And then the new one out on Country Club Ro Road, which is doctor stockholder mm -hmm. plus businessman stockholder uh, jointly owned. Well, they're planning a number, though, that organization. Yeah, but that, I mean, in Fairmont yeah. 1, for this area. I think that with a good facility and our relationship to certain third-party payers like the fund, we would be able to bring in not only this area, but, you know, say the rich would br take the extended care facility, Medicare beneficiaries out of a larger area. You think By regionally, I think. Regionally, I think we could run a show in connection with the fund, basically, mm -hmm. and if it's this high level, what you might end up in it is some of the wealthiest people, like Mr. Knowles, you remember, who, who would want just first class work mm -hmm. along with fund beneficiaries and others. Mm -hmm. Now, the important thing would be not to fill those beds with under 65 people. That would be a problem, except where you had some kind of remuneration. With the kind of insurance people have, the insurance isn't geared to getting them out of a hospital bed, except under Medicare legislation. So, so you might end up wanting a lot more beds than that. You might end up wanting... Well, this is four 22-bed units, as it was explained to me. Is that right? Uh, basically, a 88-bed? Two 22 and I think two 26. Okay, well, 86 uh, bed. Uh, that, that's that's a very nice sized unit. A hundred bed unit in round numbers is a good sized unit. You could go a floor up. Yeah. Get uh, That's what's nice. Uh, yeah. You well, first yeah. fill eighty six beds. You see, you've got a demand list backed up on you before you go up any further. I, I, I don't think it'd be anything like this some kind of, of thing our around present here. Some extended we, we care see. beds that are beds that are being used for extended care, mm -hmm. labeled extended care. In the future, when there's a mechanism for payment, will become custodial. Yeah. You know, they're really used as custodial no, now, but sure. they're not called custodial, yeah. and I think they will be eventually. If, if the resources of our country start being used in this country for the needs of our people, which hopefully with the end of the war in Vietnam and all, you know, this will happen. You're talking about the kind of money, you know, that can build schools, highways, and all the health facilities going. I think where we're ahead is, we've got some thought out here. I think this helps a lot, you know. I suppose you can only build this left side here, the extended care part. That's all anyone wants to finance. Mm -hmm. And you say to them, but we want a kitchen three times as big. When we built the clinic, we didn't. 
the firm of E. Todd Wheeler and Perkins and Will offered us long-term planning, and we rejected it. You remember the board had a chance for another 10,000 bucks or so to get a long-term plan like this? Here you've sort of got it. The reason we want this big kitchen is this. You can sell them a lot better, you know, on picking up a big tab, a big percentage portion of a larger kitchen off here, because why do we want to put the kitchen down in here underneath the ECF, you see? Sharing the parking lot and all. But it, you know, as we're telling you, we want it to be part of a pit kitchen big enough to do other things around here. Now this kind of thing, you know, is what, without this kind of aid, in effect, you know, to your own thinking and getting some clarity, I don't think you can move forward. We can do much better than we did in building what was at the time we planned this in 62 mm -hmm. and completed it in 65, the most modern and largest outpatient clinic in the state. I think this gives us a chance for one of the furthest out medical complexes. Because remember, nobody as far as I know in the country has ever conceived of this kind of combination. That without the hospital, see, hospital's still across the street here, you've built about everything else the community needs around where the doctors are. Now, this is what Mr. Deering caught the Dickens from his jury on. Uh, basically, you know, it wasn't that one of the th main thrusts. What are you doing? I mean, you know, what happened to the idea of hospital base? And this is what Ms. Brown was sitting through a meeting, I guess, at the university this morning and listening to the debate, that most of the people in the country believe everything should be hospital-based. And here we are saying, wait a minute, the reason you're hospital-based is not because they got a hotel. A lot of people can run a hotel. Hospital isn't the best people. It's not necessarily the brightest people that run in hotels. The reason you supposedly are there is because there are unique things in that building that nobody else has got. Now, there's no question for operating rooms, for intensive care units, that's the place to be. But if what you want is internists, and you end up with six or eight internists here, it's a lot easier for Dr. Koppel to run through a carter from his base group practice clinic, you see, to see a, one of his extended care facility patients that the nurse wants to talk about, to see have the headquarters of the home health service, we're already experiencing that here, to be able to, you know, meet a psychiatrist on an issue, to talk to the physical medicine guy about a rehab problem, to have it all right here, you see. Well, so that this is what's novel. Nobody else has ever tried saying, yeah, the pulmonary function labs are here. The, uh, you know, the doctors are here. The lab and the x-ray are all here. Let's build around it. And then if you can get, you know, insurance companies to pay for the, the you know, workup, because certainly many, many people who are hospitalized now don't need to be in the hospital. They need a workup that, uh, for example, the UMW patients, you know, they'll pay for it. They don't need to be in the hospital for <clears throat> some of these things that maybe someone works for some other company. They'll say, stick me in the hospital. I don't want to pay for this x-ray and that x-ray. And there are dozens and dozens upon dozens of people hospitalized for no reason except that. And that you can give people the various things they need in this type of an extended, you know, uh, care facility or with other ancillary services. This building, to take Dr. Koppel's point, just to add it, so some of you may want to comment on this. This very concept, these worksheets and all, can you imagine talk, calling in all with our labs to get the blood and to get someone to set it up? And we really give rare blood transfusions, for example, in the hematology clinic. And it would save so many hospital admissions for some people who can get everything else on an outpatient basis, just need blood every once in a while, just like we do here, and save many, many admissions, of course, this sort of thing, especially if they pay for the blood and pay for the setups and all this sort of thing, if the insurance companies would do it, save a lot of hospital beds. Some of you present were in the meetings with the vocational rehab state officials, I think, in which they said the difference in cost to them on a Social Security workup between coming to Fairmont Clinic and going to the university is they go to bed up there, usually ask for them on Friday. They put them to bed, and the first test is Monday morning. Mm -hmm. That's x-ray. Mm -hmm. Tuesday is lab. Wednesday is pulmonary function. Thursday is some other department. And Friday, the internist sees them, and they pay seven days at, say, $50 a day, $350 on top of what we're going to charge them. They're still going to pay for the internist, you know, and the x-ray in the lab. And they say, that's why we can't afford it. You know, it's ridiculous, yet that's the way a big university hospital has to operate. Even slower than that. Sometimes someone comes in and, you know, you want to get some work up, and I've seen people, I said, okay, I think we should do this and that, and I come back the next week and wasn't, we didn't get to do it yet. That's a week and has you, passed. A week since to you do something, they could do that one day, and it happens over and over again. I mean, that, that page is sitting there, and 
gee, the time that's wasted and how it's just terrible, you know. One of uh, the instructors in the nursing schools on a national study from MD Anderson mm -hmm. Cancer Hospital in Texas, and they're doing almost all of theirs on outpatient basis. Sure. All their cancer chemotherapy and everything that they've got on an outpatient basis for. And uh, it's really working out quite well. Their patients all remain in the house. Well, no, I mean, they do that, like, you know, the, our leukemia patients do that too, but a lot of times they come in, like, for blood or for this, they don't have to, but you have to have better outpatient facilities. They, first of all, they have uh, too few nurses in the clinics, so the clinic is, you know, dreadful up there, and that's one reason why that they have the hospital <coughs> everybody so much, but more outpatient things you have here, the better. Sure. Well, that's an example we had uh, one of the referrals that really, before we started doing the blood gas, should have required a... Uh, a small sedation and it just minimized us from this standpoint that this would be you know, ideal for that reason. You mean to have a bed around or what? Well to have a, a means of keeping the patient mm -hmm. uh, even though you give them a, sed a sedative and then did your blood test and then had means uh, or facilities you know yeah. follow up post on. Oh, we'd gain one room for sure, right? See, that little uh, bedroom we're using could well be, you know, over in a uh, <laughs> in another place. <laughs> we have experience in similar situations. And we we'll probably need two in our present facility, so it's squeezing us. We could use any one of these domiciliary rooms for this purpose. For instance, all our cardiacs now that we get in that we're, you know, that we, uh, are using, you know, fibrillating, that are fibrillating, and we medicate all day, ties up the bed all day. IVs going. We have the other day we had two IVs going at the same time. We had somebody in with uh, medication for cardiac conditions. Well, I'd like to ask the board members who are still present. Uh, has it been of assistance, you think, in the board's kind of planning to, you know, to get a overall view like this? Well, that is my mind very definitely. I like the presentation. I like the model. Those little wooden cars on this. <laughs> this would be what, twenty million dollars, I would think. Oh no. I could I don't believe. Oh yeah, but I oh yeah. Say. Yeah, I would think so. Huh? I don't, what did we figure? What well, we I think? thought it was eight. Eight? Well, I, I don't have an opinion, but I'm just based on By you're, the you're building three hundred beds, the most expensive stuff in the world. Uh -huh. Operating rooms, intensive care units, and it's ten million dollars. Even if you add 10, 15 percent, you know, if that was 12 million, we're not at building. That's where your money is, is yeah. in building and equipping beds. You can put in a huge whirlpool pank or a small swimming pool, you know, and you think you're spending everything you got. New x-ray, do things over, and you don't spend that kind of money. But I do think this is not cheap architecture, any bit of it. I mean, you're, you're using, these are excellent, you know, very aesthetic materials. I don't have an opinion, but uh, I would put it... Closer to $10 maybe. Uh, by time Even with buy price. the land, the land costs go well, the land. And yeah. by the time you're building, labor costs are going up, up, up. Even true. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Pat. But I'm a million dollars in debt. Well, let me say this: the the 86 bed extended care facility. If you leave land and architects fees out, should not cost over a million dollars itself. <laughs> You know, that should be under $10,000 a, 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 or around $10,000 a, a bed. And it's one of the biggest bed units you've got in there. Mr. Daring, on your elevators, would that be uh, adequate mm -hmm. what, what you showed? No, I didn't figure those out. Yeah, they are. They're very adequate. There's two passengers well, the far and things like that. Safe. Well, we've given, like, the extended care patients can exit right on grade because they're right on there in the back. And then there's the two central stair towers. It's no dead end corridors in the whole thing when you have the uh, circular system with the stair tower in the middle. And then the uh, elevators also provide, they're separated from the building. So if you would have a fire in any one of the buildings, the elevators are a separate entity. Well, you have a fire shut or something that may close it off. Does it ever ground your stairs? Well, none of, the, none of the floors are more than one floor above grade. No, no, I've got to ask that. You don't have to up one I, I'm, I must ask, too, which I forgot to do, that each of you pass back these books. We need all of them back for other presentations. 
And while Mr. Deering's here, I'd like to ask if he thinks he's ever going to visit back from Philadelphia, that we might take advantage of a visit sometime to, if you're willing to have more dialogue with a different group, why this might become your, you know, your old thesis might become something in future years we'd ask you. I'll certainly let you know. I We're given territories in HUD, and uh, I don't He's going to work for been. Housing and Urban Development. Uh, and it could be West Virginia. They were interested. The territory in just changed then. Philadelphia Regional yeah. Office does come. Very big, yeah. No, it's always covered West Virginia. Yeah, that HUD up. always has, but uh, PHS didn't. And he picked public. up, uh, our affiliate region picked up Kentucky and uh, North Carolina, and I think they're interested in me as from West Virginia. So I don't well, it'd be might, terrific if uh, in this role we could just have him back for this kind of, you know, if, suppose we were ready to talk to other kinds of people, you know, insurance people and other, you know, to acquaint more in the community with, I think the board has now got the means, don't you, of having much more intelligent dialogue of where does it want to go and what to, I don't know that anything's feasible until federal funds are available. You just can't do this. You need at least, what do they call it, 90-10 matching. In other words, for every million, the board's going to have to stretch to raise 100000 you see, so that you've got to have that as the beginning point. You can't have less money than that. And even the 90 has to be paid off on a good basis, like, you know, Medicare supported or else be a grant. Or we'll go just supporting the people, and that's going to be enough to bust us. You follow me? Just the ongoing expense, let alone the mortgages, if they have to exist. So that the financing will have to all be thought out, but I think there's no question this is the way the country's going. After all, three of you are coming back from a meeting in New York where you heard all these kind of discussions. The, uh, you know, the country has nowhere to go but to spend more money in this area, even for the indigent. For every group, uh, they're going busted, you're paying doctors under Medicare solo. They're just, uh, it's, it's just about to bankrupt the whole program if they don't end it. So we're one of the solutions. Yeah, coming back from that meeting in New York, mm -hmm. you know, hearing about all these things that are going on mm -hmm. throughout the country. This morning when I got back in the Trans Center office, I heard, the first thing I heard was Mrs. Howard, who was working for the PHS, is coming in here this week on a visit. Now, uh, you know, you probably know uh, Humphrey's sister, who is working for the government now through PHS. And the thing that she's coming in here for is to see if Trans Century is going to be refunded for another year. And uh, working as close as I have with Trans Century and HEW, nothing's impossible as far as I'm concerned. And this is not impossible or parts of it anymore. Well, and you know there were sessions with the OEO people at which they were saying they cannot keep funding their own neighborhood health centers. They'd rather get a contract with an existing facility and have them handle the low-income population. Well then, you know, you can sort of see that end of the project coming out. And Mr. Deering's concept was not to shut us down. I remember he sort of shocked a few of us, so we knew he was a daring man when he came by here one day and told us we were too much in love with our hip roof and the shape of this building. He intended to take steel beams and shoot it up as a high rise. That was one of the thoughts he had before he was getting it all down, I think, and he actually has left it, and I think part of the reason is not so much out of respect for our view of the aesthetics of the main building, but because it leaves us operational, was probably the principal consideration. If you try to build above us and all, you know, all around it, you, you have to shut the clinic down, as he put it. So that actually going out the other end is probably fairly feasible as a way to, you know, do it with that. There are land problems here, very serious ones between us and even the corner are two major properties, uh, even the Esso station, if you don't consider McAteer as a, our major acquisitions. But Claude's point's well taken. If, if federal people indicate a, uh, an interest, uh, then, you know, land that you're scared to death of at 32,000, uh, you may be willing to go to 40 on if they've approved it, you know, and that type of thing. And, I think along with this discussion, the representative, Blue Shield, one of the directors of the National Health Program insurance companies made several 
amazing remarks as far as I was concerned in the worship period in New York. And uh, he uh, told about the price of inpatient care in hospitals being so outrageous that outpatient care had to take some place in the future. And uh, when you get uh, insurance exactly making these kind of remarks, well, I think uh, the trend may be a possible change. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you coming back. Does anyone have anything else they want to add to the discussion? We hope you've enjoyed it, and you may look at the model or anything else you like. Oh, no. We're going to Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's a vote. Okay, that's a vote. Okay, that's a vote.